Craig, uh, you're on the air. How's your mind? <laughs> it's hanging in there, Art. Good. Um, my first Skype call, how am I sounding? I'm just like you're right here. Excellent, excellent. So um, I've had the strangest experience I've ever had in my life in August, and uh, I thought maybe you could give me some uh, some feedback and let me know uh, how to proceed. Have you got a minute for a story? Uh, sure. But, I mean, sure. even before you tell it, I can tell you that uh, you don't have long to live. <laughs> well, that's, yeah, that's kind of the gist of the story, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I read minds, and that may make me a, uh, a hubrid, but go ahead. Okay, so uh, and and it is so nice to have you back on the air. And that was that was a very very scary show last night. Yes, it was. Um, okay, so let me just give you a little bit of quick background about me, so that this uh, this little um, experience will make sense. So I'm in my fifties. My daughter is in her twenties. She has no children. I have no grandchildren. Um, one of my hobbies, I have uh, uh, a little fleet of kind of vintage motorcycles and, and classic cars, all in various states of disrepair that I uh, drive around during the summer. Probably um, all over the yard, right? Uh, I've got a big warehouse that, that I okay. put them in, so they're, right. not, they're not sitting out getting rusty. Okay. But, um, so, um, and I've always told her, look, when I'm gone, you can do anything you want with, with these cars and motorcycles. The only thing is, is uh, I've got this 1931 Model A that's been in the family since the 50s. My dad and I restored it. Please keep that. And then I've got this little Honda, 1972 Honda XL250 that was my first big motorcycle, and it is just like in showroom condition. So those are the only two that, you know, that I'd like to see stay in the family. Yes. So during the summer, I, um, I like to get up early and uh, before I go into the office, and I'll stop in at Starbucks with my um, uh, planner and, and have a cup of coffee and get ready for the day, usually between 6.30 and 7.00. So the second week of August, I think it was the Wednesday, the 12th, I am sitting in Starbucks having a cup of coffee. Uh, I've ridden my little um, Honda 250 down in the, uh, that morning, and, uh, and a fellow comes in, and he says, hey, who's, whose little Honda is that outside? And I said, hey, it's, it's mine. And he said, hey, I've got one you know, that's, that's just like that. Mm -hmm. And so he comes over to the table, and he stands there, and we, we, we chat for a few minutes. And you know how... Um, sometimes you just run into somebody and you just have this, this rapport with them. And I just, I mean, this guy looked like he was maybe in his late twenties, early thirties. Um, and we talked about cars and motorcycles and, um, in this, in this short conversation we had, he also mentioned, he said, yeah, he said, my, um, my grandfather left me a model a and this, and this bike. And I said, Oh, that's, that's, you know, that's a coincidence. Cause I've got a model a as well. And I'm thinking, God, you know, I had a, I had to get to know this guy, guy. is my soul brother. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, somebody that, uh, you know, that, that gets their hands greasy and we can, you know, uh, work on work on these these vehicles together. Yes. So um, we talk for a few minutes and, uh, you know, and I've and I've uh, about, you know, I, I was going to go get a refill and my my cup yes. uh, is empty. So I stand up on the side of the table and I said, hey, can I get uh, can I get you a cup of coffee? Because he hadn't gone to get one. And he said, um, no, he said, I don't have much time. He said, I, and I really need to be going. He said, but I need to tell you something. He said, and I know this is going to sound crazy. He said, but, and, you, and I can't tell you how I know. Um, and, it's the, and it was really weird. And he started to get all serious, looking right in my eyes. And his, his, his tears started to well up in his eyes. And he said, do not go to Alaska in October. And... I, you know, and I, I probably go, I'm a geologist. I go work all over the Western U.S. And I go to Alaska five, six, seven times a year. And I don't, didn't have a trip planned, but, and I kind of laughed. And he said, you know, he said, I can't tell you how, you know, I know this, but I, I just need to tell you, do not go. And, you know, and tears were in his eyes. And he reached out and grabbed around me and gave me a big hug. And he whispered something while he was hugging me, and I was so kind of taken aback. And you know how sometimes when you hear something, and it takes a little while to... I didn't understand what he said. And, uh, uh, and he let go of me and, and, and said, remember that. And he turned and, and strode towards the door, and I saw him go out the door and pass the windows. And, and I sat there for about 10 seconds processing, what, what did he say? And suddenly I, it came to me, he said, love you, Grandpa. And oh my like, god! Whoa. Oh my god! 
And so, and I, and it's like, I took off out the door and around the corner. And just as I rounded the the door around the corner, I kind of saw this flash and it was, you know, it's, it's like six 45, it's early in the morning. And, you know, and it could have been like the sun glinting off a windshield or something. But as when I came around the corner, there was no one there and there weren't any cars. And it's like 250 feet to the next doorway. And there was nobody there. And, (laughs) You know, I'm a scientist, and I don't know how to, you know, I mean, yeah, the, this this flash could have been, like I said, the reflection, and this guy could have, it could have just been a coincidence, and maybe he was messing with me, but... Doesn't sound like it to me. I don't know. So, what do you, how do you, what do you, <laughs> what do you take from that, Art? That's I don't know. Are you, are you going, experience. are you, did, did you go to Alaska? Uh, you know... Uh, the reason I'm calling is yesterday a, a proposal came across my desk oh, for God. a project in Juneau for uh, uh, for uh, for October. Oh, uh, you know, I don't think I'd go if I were you. I I would take that um, literally and seriously, and I wouldn't go. So, you know, and I'm almost tempted to just to see what would happen. Um, well, you remember at the beginning of the call what I said, right? Yes, yes. Don't go. Okay, so... And and, and if you do go, well, I was going to say call me, but, uh, you know, that chant might not come up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but anyway, very strange experience. So, I mean, you know, all I've heard about time travel is you can only go forward, you can't go backwards. Oh, what do we know about time travel? Come on. Yeah. Really. Uh, if it comes to pass, I would imagine uh, going in either direction could be certainly possible. And remind me again, what did he whisper to you? He said, love you, Grandpa. Have a good night, sir. And uh, trust me, don't. Don't, 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 don't go to Alaska. I, that sounds serious. That that was um, That was a whale of a call, wasn't it? 